Do you see any specific trends in the security industry for 2017? Well, I think that the main trend of 2017, that is clearly going to be the cybersecurity. Because if we look on video surveillance cameras, they are now IP-based and they are an intelligent network node. And we have seen the attacks of uh, the last uh, couple of weeks here. I mean, first they brought down some key services such as the DNS, and then they even brought down a whole country. And that was the result of uh, some uh, cheap and inferior uh, IP cameras and DVRs. And they were configured with uh, a standard hard-coded uh, root password, and they were relying on the open in. They were put on the open internet, and that's of course. If if it had been in the IT industry, that would have been an absolute no-no. But we in the security industry, we unfortunately lag a little bit behind the IT security. And uh, what what's very important is that uh, it is a network node, and you have to apply the same measures of security as you would do with any other IT security device. Uh, doing that means, I mean, the very most basic is, of course, to assign a proper password uh, and not have a device that has a hard-coded uh, root password. Uh, that's, that's, of course, a no-no. Uh, then you should do look on other areas to ring-fence it such as uh, the common procedures in IT departments. So you need to make sure that, uh, uh, depending on how your system is set up, I mean, having an open port for remote login is typically not a very good idea. But if you need it, you should, of course, have it, and you should have different passwords. Uh, if it's a high-security environment, you should consider 802.1x. Uh, it's cumbersome, but, of course, it adds an extra layer of security. At Axis, we have, uh, since more than a year ago, published a hardening guide that uh, goes through step by step in detail on uh, the areas you can do in order to harden your security system. And uh, this has, of course, been taken up uh, by some of our colleagues in the industry as well. So uh, I think this is clearly the number one trend of 2017. Uh, one uh, final aspect of the cybersecurity that is that you should know what type of device you have. If you look in corporate IT, I mean, they typically approve and disapprove certain vendors and softwares. And I think the same should go for video surveillance equipment. It's, after all, security. And uh, knowing the device you actually have is quite important because it's common in our industry to use OEM device. So you put, put on a certain logo, but in reality, the product comes from a different vendor. And that vendor may not have the same security measure, measures as the vendor that has its logo on top of it. And uh, having a policy that just states a certain vendor and then knowing that it may be something else, that's, of course, like having a Trojan horse. And that was exactly what happened with those attacks a few weeks ago. And the, the problem with OEM is that typically an OEM, he will make uh, a skin out of uh, the product. So he takes the OEM product, but he adds his own logo, adds some kind of custom GUI, and that's, that's nice and, and fair. But however, when the vendor is about to upgrade the firmware because they find some security threats or some other functionality, what happens is that those skinnings that they have done for different OEMs of course, they start by uh, having it in their own version first. They put it through quality control and testing. And then once that does, it, it's done, they probably need to negotiate with the OEM to make an added skinning out of the latest release. And this process typically takes three to six months. So if you have an OEM device on your network, that will always be three to six months behind in firmware compared to an original manufacturer. And this, I think, could be actually quite a big threat. So uh, this is something to think about and to put into your considerations and specs. Internet of Things has been a hot topic for a while now, uh, but you have been talking about Internet of Security Things. What do you actually mean by that? Well, uh, we have uh, looked at it uh, 
uh, by our history, I mean, we have always uh, added devices to the internet. We actually did that ever since the early 90s. And uh, now with video surveillance, I mean, initially we put the cameras on the network and the video encoders. But uh, we looked on it on a broader perspective and we realized that uh, when you have live monitoring of uh, a certain site uh, and you actually see something going on, uh, I once read a study in the U.S. and it said that 75% of all illegal activity is actually terminated if somebody, if uh, people know that they are being watched. And how shall they know that they are watched? Well, by the very simple thing of putting up like an IP-based horn speaker, you can tell them to go away. It's excellent for like a school environment where people come at night and dwell or if they even do worse things like painting graffiti or putting up fires. I mean, if you can just scream to them and say, hey, we see you, go away. Uh, I, I think that's, that's such an easy save and sell up uh, to the customers so that it, it's sort of a given. And the IP speaker, I mean, that's sort of the ultimate IoT device because it has its IP address, it takes its power from the network, and uh, that's all you need to do is to mount it and you're done. Looking on Internet of Security Things, there are, of course, more than horn speakers that you can do. Uh, you can do like the traditional uh, door station or intercom. So if you have like a critical infrastructure environment or you're putting up help stations, then you can have an intercom which is IP-based. Have in mind that this is very much of an analog market today. And being able and have ability to put up a really high-end uh, door station uh, is usually a good thing. And also, when you do those devices in like a help point in a, in a city or uh, in an underground, uh, these help stations, they are pu typically put up where they can be put up, not where they are ideal from a camera point of view. And that means it puts a lot of requirements on the camera. So you really need high-end cameras. And of course, if it's a train station, it's kind of noisy sometimes. You have to have really superior audio quality. Otherwise, the device has no value. So uh, that, that's also some, uh, some trend going on. We see more and more companies doing this. Okay, so is there any other trends you would like to touch upon? Well, I mean, one of the favorite trends that's definitely going to happen for next year as well, for 2017, uh, that is the smart codex and smart compression. I mean, this has really been the key thing of 2016, but it's definitely coming to 2017 as well. I mean, just by, if not else, I mean, just for the simple fact that people are deploying higher and higher resolutions. I mean, we, we see uh, strong sales pick up in the 4K cameras because there is not so much of a price difference between a full HD and 4K nowadays. But in order to use the 4K, I mean, it, it's useless if you don't have smart compression because it just generates too much data. So... Uh, uh, these two combinations are, are definitely trends that, uh, that we will see throughout the year.